Morning class, I'm Will Kemp from Will Kemp Art School and this is part one in a free series of acrylic painting with still life so you can paint this. This is a finished painting that we're going to get at the end of these four weeks course. It's very simple using very simple techniques, anyone will be able to do it. We use a few reds, burnt umber and whites, all the colours you should have when you're just getting started. So grab a little canvas, go to my website, you can download this image to work along from and let's get creating. So this is a lighter version of the colour that you've got underneath here. So this is uh, the burnt umber and titanium white. But just to show you the difference when you use raw umber, because this picture has got reds and greens in it and um, the complement of red is green, it's often handy to have a base or an undertone that's got a green, a very slight green tinge to it. So the raw umber, it's again just the raw umber and white. You'll see it looks a lot, a lot greyer when we compare them to this. I know the kind of optically it will look greyer because we've got a warm tone around it, but you can see how this is going to work as a better base for this particular painting. If you haven't got any raw umber, you can easily match this by starting with your burnt umber and add a tiny amount of the ultramarine blue to it, which will cool it down and you'll be able to get the similar color. Now I've done the ground with the raw umber and the white, and I've just done a very simple line drawing just with a 3B pencil to get the cherry onto the canvas. If you're drawing, you're not too sure about it, um, have a look at my website. I'm just starting a beginner's drawing course, but if you're keen on the painting, we're just starting again with the burnt umber, titanium white, and we're gonna transform this, wait for it. This is what we're after. We're gonna try and get this cherry as simply as we can um, from this starting point. So the first thing I'm going to do is to block in this shadow area. This is one of the most common mistakes when you're first starting, is that you concentrate on the object rather than the shadow that the object is, is, is casting and falling. So often you'll have like a cup that looks like it's floating or an apple that um, looks like it's in space even though it's meant to be on a tabletop. So if you tackle that first, the shadow area, what is often seen as, as like the most boring part of the picture, if we get that in first, then we'll be ahead of ourselves. So this is just uh, a sable brush. This is from uh, Rosemary Co. in England. They're really, really nice quality brushes. Um, you don't need to use a sable. It was just the closest one that I had by. So the area on the shadow area here, where I know it's slightly lighter, all I'm going to do to put in a lighter tone but still keep it simple is just to add a tiny bit of water uh, just to the tip of the brush. And then it's like a little wash that you can put in. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the image and I'm trying to see where are the, the darkest parts of this image because this is the darkest colour we're using at the moment. Again, just add a touch of water. On this area here, it's even though it's the, the red, often um, a a common mistake when you're painting, especially red objects, is that you think they need to be very light because red is such a bright colour. So what you do is you keep on adding white to it and making it lighter and lighter 
Whereas in fact, the actual tone of red, you know, if you took a black and white photograph of it, it's actually quite dark. I'm just going to swap to the filbert brush here. This is an Isabe brush. This is a number six and a filbert finish. I always favour the filberts. They're uh, they're very handy, especially for for round objects. So even though on this picture there's what's called reflective light, if you look very closely, if you look very closely on this edge of the picture. So can you see how there's some reflected light here that's bouncing off of the white all around and coming back onto this side. Now there's also some when you look under here, it's a, it's a different tone, it's a lot purplier. But we're not initially worried about that. Um, often when you're first starting you try and you know worry about all these details but you really don't don't need to. You need to try and look at the, the mass form of it, the real the real basic structure and then the details or these kind of bits can always come later. It's always best to start simply and then kind of add more detail as you go along. You see how by putting this shadow line in, what I've created is this shape here, it's called a negative space. And when you're doing your drawing, it's very handy to look at these spaces to help you to be able to draw the subject. Okay, for the, the first part of that, that's, that's all we need to do, just to get us a, a basis to get started. Just make sure after this stage, especially if you're using like a sable brush, that you just wash it out well in water, dampen it, you know, use a bit of kitchen roll just to soak up the water into it. And, you know, you can squeeze it out so you see how elements of the pigment all come out into there. And then you've got a clean brush. Okay, that won't, won't make any marks on anything. And you can put that to the side because now we're just going to work with a filbert to start blocking in the background. Click to subscribe above so you don't miss the next lesson. This is Will Kemp from Will Kemp Art School.